Hi, welcome back to Kolsky RC. So today we're going to have a look at this. This is the iFlight Chimera 4LR. So the little bit of an intro video you saw before this, you'll know that this has got a fault. So I purchased this probably a couple of weeks ago now and I bound it up, set it all up. And it was always difficult to get it to uh, arm, even when I had the full 40, even though I had 14, 15 satellites and they were telling me it was okay and so there was no problem there. I was still finding it difficult to arm, no matter what I did in beta flight. So uh, I left it that day, next day I came to it and eventually it started to bind and it seemed fine every time after that. So it seemed okay. So I took it down to the field and I flew it, uh, one flight and it felt okay. Uh, in the air, maybe a little slight bit twitchy, but I was putting that down to the fact that it was obviously a new model to me, I'd not flown it before, but I was only cruising because this is what it's designed to do. You'll see a video at the end uh, of what the video looks like, the camera looks like, but that's by the by. So I landed it, brought it into land, uh, checked it over just to see what this little twitching was. Everything seemed fine, there was no, I checked all the motors and everything, it seemed fine. Uh, went to arm it, one arm, eventually it armed, and it seemed okay. So I took I took the battery off, swapped the battery out, put a new battery on it, and that's when the problem started. So when I put a new battery on it, this motor you'll see in the video spins, the other three don't. Well, they do, but they, they catch and they hack. Put it onto beta flight, you get exactly the same result if you run your motor through. So it looks like it's possibly the ESC. However, when I swapped this motor there, it ran. So it makes me think it's a motor. So I've contacted um, uh, Bangor Knife Flight and I'm being sent out four more. I've got four motors coming for it and a new ESC. That should solve the problem. So I'm not really going to whinge about that. Quality control, sometimes these things can happen. So let's talk about the quad itself. So it's a four inch long range racer. It comes in. It depends what battery. If I fly this with a 650, I'm over. I'm for, I think I'm coming in at 254. So you're the, over the 250. If you want to fly it with a 450 or 550, you're probably going to be okay. I'd bring it under, but your flight time is going to be reduced. I have an, I was going to fly this with an 1100 because that's what I bought for it. Because I'm not that bothered about the weight. I'm registered anyway, so I'm not that bothered. And, I never got a chance to do that, obviously. And there will be a follow up video to this coming up when I do, I'll do another review on it if you like. But I wanted to do an initial review on it because there's certain things I want you to look at if you're thinking of buying one of these. It's quite expensive. It comes in around 240 quid for this model. This has got the D, um, DTI. It's got the Cadix Vista unit on the back. So it doesn't have a Cadix Vista camera. It has a Cadix Nebula. At the time of making this video, you cannot get the combo. So you have to, if you want to buy this, you have to order it with the Nebula and there is no Cadix that's coming out at the end of this month. Also, I've been told, don't know if that's changed. If you do, let me know in the comments because I want to get a camera. Well, I actually want to get another full system for something else, but let me know in the comments down below. I am going to swap this camera out. When I bought it, I had the intention of probably doing that at some point anyway. However, this is a Nebula, this is a Nebula 2. It is complete and utter crap. It's not much better than analog. You're going to see from the footage coming up, it's not great at all. It blows out. The colours just look so saturated. And no matter what I do with it, I cannot get it right in my goggles to when I'm flying. It looks alright, don't get me wrong. And it is better than analog because it don't break up. However, it is not good. And it certainly isn't worse. If I was you, I'd probably wait and just buy it. Or buy the analog version, have some fun with it. And then put an air unit on afterwards. One of them things, that's what I'd do. I certainly wouldn't buy it with this nebula. On the front because i really don't know what's the point of this camera whatsoever i've seen the v1 and that's what videos i'd watched and to me there doesn't look that much difference is the v2 i've double checked and it is better than the v1 videos i've seen but not enough it, it's just not good enough so I, I would recommend not doing that like i say if you want this buy it with nothing at all in which you can do or buy it with the Analog and just have some fun for now, or wait. Probably the best option just to wait. So it comes with two sets of props. You get another set of blue, you get a set of blue props that comes with this. It comes with this long antenna on the back, and in the box it will come folded up like that. 
don't worry it's not broken it's obviously because it won't be in the box you just push it back into the plastic there you can put a little bit of glue on if you wanted i prefer to leave it like that it'll just pop out on a crash it obviously comes with gps you can set this up certain ways out of the box it comes set up that you will need to have satellites to take off you can change that in beta flight under the tab for um, fail safe i have this set up with fail safe turned on and return at 50 meters and i have it set so it won't take off without in the required number of satellites if you turn off that feature you will not have fail safe fully set up because it will not know where its takeoff point is it needs to have takeoff point set and the reason it does that is it holds you in a mode that you can't even arm once you've got that you said off you've got a return to home point okay it won't return to home like a dji drone i said that before moving videos it returns to home but it, and it does return to home it comes back to you uh, Joshua Badwell's done a video recently showing you on how this return to home feature works. I suggest you look at it. In fact, I'll put a link in the video description down below because it's really a good video. It's only five minutes long, worth watching. It comes with XT30 connector, so be careful on what batteries you buy because a lot of other, a lot of 4S batteries do come with a XT60. I actually bought one with an XT60 and I've just cut the end off it and soldered my own end on, so that's not a problem at all. But if you don't want to do that, obviously make sure you do get that. The motors that come on here, even though mine have possibly failed, even though I'm not sure they have. It's 1404-3800kV, this comes in different versions. This is a 3800kV version, I believe the other version is 3000kV. This will allow me to do uh, freestyle in this easier than it will on the 3000 version. 3000 version is more definitely for cruising. I bought this to do both, but to be fair, this thing cruises and i didn't try it i don't think i tried doing this no i didn't i just cruised around with it on the first flight so i was going to have a proper play with it next flight never got a chance so there are the motors it comes with the mamba mini stack in there is it is it a mamba mini stack just bear with me just let me double check that sorry no it's got the success mini stack and and i'm having sent this new ec esc out um so i'm gonna be whatever i'm gonna replace the motors and esc anyway i don't want to leave um either on so we're gonna have it new and if these motors are fine which would be nice i'll use these in a different build that i've got planned because i tend to build my own one of these so they do a dead cat they do a dead cat frame for this it's 24 25 pound you can buy it directly from my flight i haven't seen anybody else that sells it at the minute and it obviously turns into a dead cat but you have to replace everything because it's a unibody frame obviously so instead of doing that, I'm going to buy the dead cat version and I will build my own. I'll put my own motors on. Hopefully the motors, I'll have a set of motors out of this. And then I'll put a Mamba mini stack in it. And we'll put a, DJ, we'll put a, a Cadix unit in it. I may not put GPS, I don't know, but I have got a GPS module. I have actually got a GPS module with a compass. So this doesn't have a compass. This is just GPS with no compass. You can get GPS modules with a built-in compass. But it's harder to set up. I am still thinking of possibly doing that on a video. But I'll have a, if I do that, I'll have the build video coming up. If you're wondering why I'm filming in my where I, where I do work, this is where I'm going to film all videos from now on. It's much easier for me just to have the camera set up in here, so I can just swing it to one side and move it out of the way when I want to use the workbench, and then just pull it back to film. So that's where I'm going to use it for. I can zoom. I can take the camera further out if it's a bigger quad. So that's what I'm going to use it for. So you're going to see videos in here. And I'll probably start time-lapsing stuff when I'm doing builds. So I can just put a bit of time-lapse on to show you what I've done. So when I do the build on this, I will build it in here. I'll time-lapse it and then I'll show it you. So all in all, it's, it's a really nice made piece of kit, really. It's, the, the arms are thick enough. It's not flimsy. It don't feel too flexy. Um, mm. The TPU mount on the camera seems to work well. If you've seen some videos on this, um other videos on this you'll see there was two screws in here and people and it was said by the reviewer that you couldn't pull this camera far enough back well cadix must have reviewed this because they've only put one screw in which allows it to have the camera straight on virtually i've got i think a three or four mil uh degree tilt up on that because if i'm cruising you don't really want your camera up 10 20 degrees you just want to cruise with it so you can adjust it that way so it's much easier than if you've seen the original ones. I think Andy RC reviewed it and he's had two screws in. 
and it was one of the things he mentioned they've done away with that and it might just be because this has got the nebula camera in which only has one screw if you buy the one without the one the um if you do buy it and you buy it with the proper calyx vista camera you're going to have to probably modify this to get the camera to come down so yeah all in all i think this is quite decently made I like the fit and finish. The TPU parts are very nicely made. I've got no jello at all coming from the camera unit here. There is no jello at all. And I will do the full review. When I do the full review on this, I'll have more footage because I'll have footage from the goggles. I'll have footage from um, the camera that I'm going to put on the top of here. The camera I am putting on the top of here, I'm putting on an Insta360 Go. I bought one recently. Um, I'd, I'll be honest, when that thing first came out, I did not understand why anybody would buy one. I didn't understand. Uh, I thought it would be a waste of money. But since it went into FPV mode, that's why I decided to buy one. And the initial impressions, really good. I've had a few little flights with it. had a mess about, and they look good. You've got to make sure it's quite prone to jello. So what I will recommend if you get one, make sure you mount it nicely. I had a TPU print, and it's not, probably not tight enough. So, that's a bit last. That's it for today. Thanks ever so much for watching. Have a fantastic day. Thanks for watching my channel, if you like the video please subscribe and hit the like button and also hit that notification bell, there's plenty more good stuff coming up.